let's discuss the second access theorem that is the parallel access theorem. Unlike to the situation of perpendicular access theorem, this theorem can be applied for any kind of object. Like perpendicular access theorem is applicable only for two dimensional or laminar structures. So we can write it is valid for all types of rigid bodies. The theorem, let us first define it. Say we are given with a three dimensional body and uh, we are required to find the moment of inertia of this body about any given axis of rotation about which the body is rotating. So, this moment of inertia is I. So, to evaluate the value of I, for application of parallel axis theorem, first we locate the center of mass of body. So, this is the center of mass of body. First we locate the center of mass. Then we consider another axis of rotation which is passing through center of mass and it is parallel to the initially given axis about which we are required to find moment of inertia. Say about this considered parallel axis, the moment of inertia is IC. Then the moment of inertia of the body about the initially given axis can be written as I is equals to IC plus MD square, where D is the normal separation between the two parallel axes. One is the central axis, other is the initially given axis and the two must be perpendicular. Parallel. So, in this situation, the moment of inertia of the body about any given axis can be given as IC plus MD square, where IC is the moment of inertia of body about the axis which is parallel to initial axis and passing through center of mass plus the product of mass and the square of distance between the two parallel axes. So, this is the statement of parallel axis theorem. Let us also analyze how the expression can be derived. For the body which we can see here, to analyze the parallel axis theorem, let us first consider an elemental mass dm in the body. Say this dm is located at a distance small r from the initial axis about which the moment of inertia is required and say its distance from the central axis of rotation is RC. So, here we can directly write the moment of inertia about the central axis can be given as integration of dm RC square and moment of inertia about the required axis of rotation is integration of dm R square. In this situation, we can relate this distance R and RC by using the separation between the two axes D Say if uh, this angle is theta, which the extension of this uh, line joining the axis of rotation is making with RC, and we also drop a perpendicular from the position of mass dm onto this line. Here we can write this distance would be RC cos theta, and this distance would be RC sin theta if this angle is theta. So we can Simply write in the situation R square is equal to RC sin theta whole square plus this is D plus RC cos theta whole square. Here we are just using Pythagoras in this right angle triangle. Now in this situation on just squaring the terms we will get R square is equals to it is RC square sin square theta and on opening these two terms, we will get D square plus RC square cos square theta plus 2 D RC cos theta. So, in this situation RC square sin square theta and RC square cos square theta will become RC square plus D square plus in this situation we will be getting 2 D RC cos theta. So, this is the relation we are getting in R, R, C and D. Here obviously theta is a variable 
which varies according to the position of elemental mass dm. If we just find out the required moment of inertia, we know I can be given as integration of dm r square. If we substitute the value of r square here, see what we'll be getting. It is integration of dm r c square plus integration of dm d square plus integration of dm into 2 d r c cos theta. So here we can see the moment of inertia I is equals to the very first term we can write as IC. Second term is integration of dm d square here d square is a constant. So integration of dm is the total mass of body so it can be written as md square plus here this 2d is a constant it can be taken out we can write it as integration of dm rc cos theta. We talk about the term dm multiplied with rc cos theta. Here rc cos theta is the distance of any particle from the central axis of rotation or from the center of mass. So dm into rc cos theta is the mass moment of the particle with respect to center of mass, which we already studied in the previous chapter that the product of mass and the separation from center of mass, which is the mass moment. If we find out the sum of mass moment of all the particles for a given object, it is always equal to zero. So this term will vanish. So we can see here moment of inertia I about the initially given axis of rotation. This can be written as IC plus MD square, which is our expression for parallel axis theorem. Let us take up some applications of parallel axis theorem. We talk about the applications of parallel axis theorem for a ring. We know well that for the situation of a ring, if it is rotated about its central axis of rotation, the axis which is passing through its center and perpendicular to the plane of ring, we know that this IC is given as MR square. If we wish to find out the moment of inertia of this ring about an axis passing through the circumference of the ring or it is tangential to the ring and perpendicular to the plane like this. If we rotate this ring about this given axis of rotation, then the moment of inertia can be directly calculated by use of parallel axis theorem. Because the axis which is parallel to this axis and passing through center is this and its moment of inertia we are already aware about it is MR square. So this separation is also R. So using parallel axis theorem I can be written as IC plus MD square and here IC is MR square and the separation between the two parallel axis can also be written as R. So it is also MR square so it can be written as 2 MR square. So this is the moment of inertia of a ring about an axis passing through the circumference of the ring and it is perpendicular to the plane of ring. Similarly, if we talk about moment of inertia of a ring about its tangential axis of rotation. So this is the ring and if we draw a tangent or say if we rotate a ring about its tangential axis of rotation. There is an axis of rotation which is along the tangent of ring. So this moment of inertia I can also be calculated very easily by using parallel axis theorem. For this we need to consider another axis which is parallel to the initially given axis and passing through the center of this ring. So this is the axis which can be considered as diametrical axis of rotation. And we know well that for the case of a ring, the diametrical axis of rotation, moment of inertia of the ring can be written as half MR square. Just now in the previous section we have studied. Now if this is moment of inertia half MR square, and moment of inertia about the given axis can be calculated by parallel axis theorem as the separation between the two axes is R. So we can write using parallel axis theorem I is IC plus MD square and here we take IC as half MR square that is moment of inertia about diametrical axis plus 
m r square as the separation d is also r. So the moment of inertia of a ring about its tangential axis of rotation can be written as 3 by 2 m r square. Similarly, if we talk about uh, the applications of parallel axis theorem about a disc. Again, we know for the situation of a disc about its central axis of rotation, its moment of inertia can be given as half m r square. And if we find out the moment of inertia about an axis which is passing through its circumference and normal to the plane of this disc, and about this moment of inertia, we can directly use parallel axis theorem as IC plus MD square. The separation between these two axes can be taken as R. So, moment of inertia is written as half MR square plus MR square. So, this will be equal to 3 by 2 MR square. This is the moment of inertia of a disc about an axis of rotation which is passing through its edge and it is perpendicular to the plane of the disc. Similarly, for the tangential axis of rotation of a disc, we can also use parallel axis theorem. If this is the disc and we want to rotate it about an axis which is tangential to the disc which is lying in the plane of this disc and say we rotate it and we are required to find its moment of inertia i. Then we consider another axis which is parallel to this axis and passing through the center. So this would be the diametrical axis of rotation for the disc, of which moment of inertia we have already calculated in the previous article, which is 1 by 4 mr square. This is the moment of inertia of the disc about diametrical axis of rotation. And the two parallel axes are separated by a distance r because one is tangential and other is along the diameter. So, using parallel axis theorem, this i can be written as again ic plus md square. Here ic can be written as 1 by 4 mr square plus as d is equal to r, it is written as mr square. So, moment of inertia of a disc about its tangential axis of rotation can be written as 5 by 4 mr square. Now, in sequence, we'll talk about moment of inertia of a hollow and solid sphere about the tangential axis of rotation. Say we are having a hollow sphere, which is considered to be a thin walled sphere. We know well that for a hollow sphere about the central axis of rotation, the moment of inertia about this axis is given by 2 by 3 mr square, which we can consider as IC. If we consider a tangential axis, and about this axis the hollow shell is rotated, then about this axis we can state the moment of inertia can be given by parallel axis theorem that is IC plus MD square. We substitute the values IC can be taken as 2 by 3 mr square plus D is the separation between the two axes R. So, this is MR square. So, here moment of inertia is 5 by 3 MR square. Similarly, we can talk about the moment of inertia of a solid sphere about its tangential axis of rotation. Say we have a tangential axis, and if we talk about the central axis of rotation, we know well that about the central axis of rotation, moment of inertia of a solid sphere is given by 2 by 5 mr square. So, about the tangential axis, this moment of inertia I can be given by parallel axis theorem as IC plus MD square. So, here IC is 2 by 5 mr square, and again the separation between the two axes is R. So, it is plus mr square, which can be written as 7 by 5 mr square. So, this is the moment of inertia of a solid sphere about its tangential axis of rotation.